She awoke in the dark, feeling cold, and scratched a new sore spot on her side. It was wet. In her confusion, she grabbed her phone and shined its flashlight at her side, revealing an incredibly shallow bite mark and the elongated fingers of something that quickly recoiled into the dark and disappeared without a trace. This image was the only evidence posted of this novel, uncategorized entity, uploaded by investigator Leo Vincible, alongside the phrase, don't let the bedbugs bite. This is the latest in many independent investigators telling the foundation exactly where they can stick their rules for distribution of anomalous media. Seriously, every time some bureaucracy tells me exactly how I have to walk through their red tape, I just want to strangle them with it. While an image and a phrase isn't a lot of information, it's still enough to get a baseline understanding of the creature in front of us. As always, on the AZFK Show, we start by judging a book by its cover and examining the anomaly's physical characteristics. Its two giant red eyes alongside its scattered assemblage of smaller ones look primed for night vision. Giant pigmented pupils to catch as much scarce light as possible. While at first glance, with this creature's stark white, unnaturally smooth skin and two little slit holes for a nose, it resembles a gray alien. However, this would be an oversimplification of the monster's true nature based on appearance alone. Let's take a closer look. It has a set of jet black gums around a perfectly maintained set of human teeth. Looks like this guy's been brushing. While this entity looks humanoid in shape from the shoulders up, based on the other anomalies that we've covered, it would be naive to assume that means it has a humanoid lower half. If it does, it looks like it might be straddling whoever it's on top of, suggesting that if we want to learn more about this creature, we should check the state's sex offender registry. All jokes aside, we can likely gauge a deeper understanding of this creature and how it operates by examining its namesake, the bedbug. The bedbug, as many know, is a blood-sucking parasite that makes its nest in fabrics of human homes. Most often in the bed, because that's where it gets the easiest access to the most blood. Yours! They crawl on you while you sleep. These creatures are most active during the spookiest hours of the night, midnight to 3 a.m. They can sense body heat and carbon dioxide using their antenna, and use these signals to locate their prey. Bedbugs can also live without feeding for three to six months, even up to 300 days in colder climates. They have flat torsos until they feed, at which point they blow up like balloons. Bedbugs also don't carry any diseases, which serves as an evolutionary advantage. Don't want to kill off your food source, or give them any more reason to get rid of you. I know what you're saying. Why are you spouting off about a random species of bug? What are you, some sort of bug fucker? That has nothing to do with the situation. That brings me to what my theory about the original creature really is. I believe that this is an anomalous parasitic creature that lives in the dwellings of humans, feeding off of them for sustenance. Leo Vincible likely wrote, don't let the bedbugs bite, as a fun wink to the audience. But it could also signify that this monstrosity shares traits with the everyday pest. Like a bedbug, it takes root in someone's home and begins to feed while they sleep at night. It's almost impossible to drive away, staying with the prey, consuming their blood, slowly making them weaker and weaker until they wither away. Or something goofy like that. When it only has a few people to feed off of, such as an individual or a family, it sucks them dry quickly and needs to relocate. When it lives in a larger group, it can sustain itself for longer. In complexes, dorms, departments, it can live unnoticed for years. In this one frat house, they put it through hazing. It's a member now. All the pledges have to get sucked off by it, and I guess that's better because they used to use a person for that. It isn't the goal of the bedbug to kill an individual, only to feed. But if it's hungry enough, it won't care for the fate of its food. This isn't malicious, it's just an animal, like any other. Like regular bedbugs, this creature can go long periods without feeding, and can reactivate from its inactive state upon detecting body heat or carbon dioxide from blood-having animals such as yourself. If it drank mine, I think it would just straight up die. Most creatures do. Game got really drunk, but that was a rare exception. The idea that this creature may be related to bedbugs make me guess again for what the red dots on the face might be. While I still think the two large ones, as well as some of the others, are solely sight organs, I believe that some of the red sense organs may be responsible for sensing things like carbon dioxide and body heat. This creature could use these like bedbugs, but take it one step further, and attempts to locate the largest populations of humans for the most assured supply of meals. I wonder if we put this guy in a crack house, would he get really high and then addicted? If we put him in a brothel, would he get an STD? What about if we put him in Wisconsin, would he get diabetes? I ask the questions that really matter. Now let's say this critter is really close to bedbugs in nature. Like, really close. 
Fun fact, bed bugs mate through a method known as traumatic insemination. Translation, the guy bed bug has a really sharp penis and stabs the ass of the girl bed bug and then nuts into her bloodstream. That wasn't very fun, but it was a fact. Nature is just so beautiful sometimes. I mean, not this. This makes me want to turn the entire earth into a fucking parking lot, but I don't know, go drink some ocean or something. The photo in question was likely taken when this bed bug had completely filled itself. Like a regular bed bug, it has a lower half that's just kind of like an empty balloon when it hasn't fed, and then it fills this stupid sack until it's bursting at the seams with other people's blood. Then it drags its fat ass away on its two front limbs. It may have been too overzealous in feeding in a large apartment complex and got too obese to waddle away before someone pulled out their iPhone, or some shit like that. If you like this video for some reason and you want me to come back and talk about more nonsensical critters, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, and watch all my other stuff, or I'll feed you to the bed bug man. I want to thank Biodegradable for editing this video. They're a good editor, you should go watch all of their things. I want to shout out the Inner Circle for supporting me. Love y'all. Alright, bye.